Good morning, good morning. This is uh, Rashad Mitchell coming to you live from my YouTube channel as I continue on my part series. The week that was, college football history in review, the 1959 college football season. We're going to get to um, week number 8, November 7, 1959. So now I'm in the month of November. So we're going to start with um, the first game that was played on November 7th. On Saturday, obviously, Pittsburgh, they beat Boston College by a score of 22-14. Now, the next game was a big matchup between two top 10 teams, number four, Syracuse, against number seven, Penn State, where number four, Syracuse, beat number seven, Penn State, 20-18. Drop long pass kept dominant number seven, Penn State, from building more than a 6 nothing first quarter lead. By the time, Orangeman had back girl Swedes, scored the second quarter touchdown, Number four, Syracuse had game control and cruised to 26 margin by fourth quarter. Lake Lions sophomore halfback Roger Cockman flew 100 yards on kickoff touchdown return and two defensive stands later tackled Andy Steinchula. Made punt block that positioned Penn State for a one-yard touchdown punch by fullback Sam Sobzak. So Lions missed about two-point tries after each fourth quarter touchdown remain behind at 20 to 18 as orange kill clock sustained power was running despite its inspired rally penn state oddly gained only two yards in second half against syracuse defense led by n fred martino guard linebacker roger davis number 11 georgia beat florida 21 10 in jacksonville halfback punter Bobby Walden of Georgia surprised Gaves with early option pass 4 to 14 yards to end Gordon Kelly. Trailing 14 on the end rank, Florida rallied with 70 yard pass to 2 yard from 2 yard line from quarterback Dick Allen to have back Bobby Joe Green. Bulldogs held but suffered safety on drop end zone punch snap, making it 14 2. So in third quarter, Allen paid pass Gators to 9 yard line. But Georgia quarterback defensive back Charlie Brick might made interception hash 100, 100 yards for a brilliant counterpoint touchdown. Gators had back defensive back Jack Westbrook had interception touchdown return too late to help. Next, the battle of two top 15 teams, number 13 Tennessee, upset number one Louisiana State 14-13. For the second time in 1959, Tennessee ended another team's long unbeaten streak. This time, 19 game, 19 game uh, beating win, winning streak of LSU. Volunteers pair of third quarter touchdowns, including blocking back defensive back Jim Cartwright's 54 yard interception. Return gave them 14 7 lead to counter the second quarter 26 yard touchdown run by Tigers had back Billy Cannon, who had 122 yards rushing. But enjoying 334 yards to 112 yards of advantage. Bayou Bengals got fourth quarter break when Cannon's punt squirted away from Volunteers' tailback Billy Majors at the two yard line. That quick touchdown made it a 14 13 game. Cannon tried the two point run blast, but was piled up less than a foot short by defensive back Majors, guard Wayne Grubb, and win back linebacker Charles Severance. Vanderbilt beat Kentucky by a score of 11 to 6. Next, Alabama beat Tulane by a score of 19-7. Michigan State upset number 14 Purdue by a score of 15 to nothing. As Slim Rose Bowl chances evaporate from Purdue as last year's seller dwellers Michigan State punch away their return from the Big Ten wilderness according to Chicago Tribune. The Boilermakers reached Michigan State's 11-yard line on early pass but legal receiver downfield penalty. Spoiler throw by quarterback Benny Bernie Allen and pushed them back to own 40-yard line. That was Purdue's frustrating day in a nutshell as they lost five fumbles. It also failed to solve Michigan State's university's previously poorest pass defense. So with only 156 yards in 33 pass drives on um, fake field goal pass in first quarter by state quarterback Dean Look, turned into 28-yard touchdown to have back Gary Ballman. Although left-footed and kicker Art Brandstatter Missed two conversion kicks, and he nailed 23-yard field goal in third quarter for Michigan State's last 
uh, points. Next, we got the uh, Indiana Hoosiers beating Michigan 26-7. It was Indiana's second straight win over the Wolverines of Michigan after having lost 10 of 11 from 1946 to 1957. The battle of two top 10 teams, number 9 Wisconsin, beat number 2 Northwestern by score of 21-19. The tournament Badgers took the command in second quarter and tied number 2 Wildcats atop of Big Ten standings. Defensive end Alan Schoonover, Schoonover uh, recovered errant lateral at Northwestern 16-yard line to allow halfback Ron Steiner to catch 14-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter for Badgers' first lead at 10-7. Wisconsin kept at, at it for 17-point second quarter surge, which brought visitors from behind twice and were spun on axis of quarterback Dale Hackbart's two touchdown passes. It was answered for a 69-yard touchdown run by Northwestern halfback Ron Burton, who had 169 yards, 12 carries. So Badgers led 17-13 at halftime, so with score at 24-19, Wisconsin sub quarterback Jim Bacon threw ill-fated interception, which fleet with fleet Wildcats and defensive end Albert Kimbrough appeared on his way for the touchdown, but Bacon was able to head off Kimbrough at the 11-yard line, so Burton fumbled the ball away three plays later, and last-minute Wildcats opportunity died on interception by superb Wisconsin guard linebacker Jerry Stalkup. Next, shutout was performed by Missouri over number 18 Air Force 13-0. Stung weak earlier by Colorado passes, Missouri unleashed on standing defensive ends Russ Sloan and Daniel Rose in Fort Pierce of rush of Air Force. Quarterback Rich Mayer, meanwhile, far less heralded and far more sparring passer. Tigers quarterback Phil Snowden came off bench in the second quarter to fashion a 58 yard drive for upset. Snowden passed for the decisive touchdown, 39 yard arrow for which halfback Norris Stevenson leap over and fullback linebacker Monte Morberg to make his catch and eluded Falcons halfback defensive back. Phil Lane to run from 20-yard line into the end zone. A Missouri second scoring drive in the third quarter. Snowden twice converted fourth down plays to lead to halfback. Donnie Smith's 11-yard touchdown. Reverse run. Behind fabulous block by Snowden that cleared last two defenders. And finally, number three, Texas. Beat Baylor by a point, 13-12. As Baylor quarterback Ronnie Stanley. Passed for 13 of 18 for 120 yards and ran for 34 yards, including a third quarter touchdown, which gave the 12 7 lead to the Bears. A Texas sophomore had back Jack Collins twice, gained six yards on critical fourth downs on winning 39 yard advance in the fourth quarter. After each Baylor scored two point pass try, fell with which allowed Texas quarterback kicker Bobby Lackey's conversion kick to win one point Southwest Conference game for the second time. In 1959, fullback Claire Branch rushed for 74 yards on 17 carries for the Longhorns. Now that concludes look at the games that week that was on November 7th, 1959. Now let's look at the um, AP poll as of November 9th. Uh, number one, Syracuse. Number two, Texas. Number three, Louisiana State. Number four, South Carolina, Southern California. Number five, Mississippi. Number six, Northwestern. Number seven, Wisconsin. Number eight. Auburn, number 9, Tennessee, and Penn State, number 10. That's the top 10. The rest of the top 20 round out is this. Number 11, Clemson. Number 12, Georgia. Number 13, Washington. Number 14, Georgia, Oregon. Number 15, Oregon State. And it was a tie for the um, 16th spot. Iowa, North Texas State. Number 18, Texas Christian. 19, Michigan State. And number 20, Arkansas. So that concludes a look at the beat that was the games that were played on November 7th, 1959. Weeks uh, number eight, November 7, 1959. The week that was comes for all the review. Please like, subscribe to the uh, channel. That includes this video. Do we can support? Uh, that includes look at the games that were played on uh, during week eight, November 7, 1959, for the 1959 season of college football. Until then, talk to you tomorrow.